Hi, it's Dwyer. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. Let's talk Alexander Povetkin's win over Dylan White. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now there are knockouts and there are knockouts. I want people to realize how magnificent this knockout was. Right? The setup was beautiful. Povetkin comes in in a right hand stance. Now understand, he's faster than Dylan White. He's the better athlete than Dylan White. You can tell that just by looking at the legs, just by looking at how low he's able to get. We all go through life at different speeds. Dylan White can't drive as fast as Alexander Povetkin, right? While Dylan White, in boxing parlance, he's the counter in this fight, is trying to deal with Povetkin's leads. And while he's having success, he's winning the fight before the knockdown. In the prior round, he knocks down Povetkin twice. While he's having some success, understand, Povetkin, who's faster than White, as I've said, is faking like he's coming in. Then he's coming in with heavy shots. Right? Heavy shots. White's best moment in the fight is at the end of the prior round where, like Floyd Mayweather did to a very aggressive Ricky Hatton, White has Povetkin jump in. White times what I believe is a check left hook. On the telecast, they call it a left uppercut. In any event, White's back on his heels and times the shot so when Povetkin comes in with his shot and doesn't land it, White has a moment to counter. That's what he's waiting for. And he lands the left hook on Povetkin, knocks Povetkin down. Understand, Povetkin is a poker player. Don't believe his visual image. On the replay, you see that he's caught flush. It's not a flash knockdown. He's hit hard. He goes down. When he gets up, forget how he looks. I know he always looks the same. He looks like it's a flash knockdown. You can tell by the way he moves in those last few seconds of the round. The last Dylan White knockdown of Povetkin comes with just 15 seconds or less left in the round. You can tell he's been stung badly. So we get to the next round. I have no doubt that Dylan White was feeling some confidence. But he had been set up. In earlier rounds, Povetkin again the lead to Dylan White's counter. Right? Povetkin can start his motor faster than Dylan White. He has some routines that he does, right? Different scenarios that he uses, and he makes sure that they look random. But understand, earlier in the fight, he came in with power shots. In other words, he would fake, fake, fake. Then he'd come in with a right hand, right? Heavy punches. Povetkin's not a guy who spends a lot of time feeling you out. By design, he's an ambush fighter. So he's outside, then he leaps in. He's two-handed. The big punch might be a left, the big punch might be a right. But in this fight, 
he comes in and he's throwing heavy right hands earlier in the fight as part of his arsenal. So then we get to the last round. Understand, Povetkin is faster than White. White is the counter. White is trying to respond to what Povetkin's doing. A good White scenario would be to block Povetkin's shot as Povetkin's on the way in and then to counter him. So this time, Povetkin, he's in an orthodox stance. This is my left, right? He comes in, he throws a left. The left doesn't have a lot of juice on it. He throws a left, not to punch Dylan White, but to confuse him and to move him. So Povetkin, who's been throwing heavy right hands on ambushes, comes in this time, throws the left. Dylan White must have thought the right was coming next. Instead, Povetkin, right, after moving White a little bit this way, then goes low. He's the superior athlete at 40, almost 41. He then goes low, and as Dylan White's expecting the right hand, he throws a left uppercut from underneath Dylan White. Dylan White's hands are like this. He's hit flush on the chin. That's the end of the fight. It's because of Povetkin's speed. I'm not saying his hands are that blinding. What I'm saying is his foot speed, he has a big gap between himself and Dylan White. And it's because Dylan White only has a millisecond to make a decision. And it's because Povetkin has practice scenarios where he comes in and you don't know if he's throwing a right or a left. And he sets it up where it's going to be a left-right. And because he's reckless, in other words, he's prepared to get knocked down in fights. He was hit hard by David Price. He was hit hard by Michael Hunter. If you want to see Povetkin in trouble very early, look at the first two rounds of the Michael Hunter fight. He's hit hard here. He keeps the same facial expression even when he's getting shelled. He's coming in with a much higher percentage of power shots than Dylan White, right, in terms of leading with them. Because Dylan White is fearing the right hand, Bavetkin is able to throw a double left that is really a single left right it's a left uppercut the first left is just to confuse Dylan White it's an ambush that uppercut that he throws he would have thrown regardless understand he, while White is reacting to what he's doing, while White's looking for openings, Povetkin's an ambush fighter who's only presenting scenarios. Right? That combination is predetermined. He's thrown right hands. He knows before he even comes inside during that sequence that White's going to be getting ready to guard the right hand, getting ready to try to counter it. Because White's cautious, because White is taller, because White is not the athlete who can get as low as Povetkin, because Povetkin isn't cautious, thinks 
differently and is prepared early in a fight to throw the heaviest shots possible. When Dylan White guesses wrong, when Povetkin comes in and throws a little left hand and Dylan White thinks it's a setup for the big right hand and it's not it's not it's the first of two left hands and who would think that one round after Povetkin ends the round getting off the canvas it would be Povetkin crashing the pocket it would be Povetkin setting up the spacing I'm sure Dylan White might think it's happenstance that he happened to be close to the ropes. Right? It, it, it defies normal expectations that shortly after getting off the canvas the prior round, Vivekin would come in and deepen the pocket from down low. He's able to get low because he's the better athlete and he's shorter from down low on a second straight left hand, he would uncork that left uppercut. This was a dangerous fight for White. Let me say this, just a few other comments. I believe in continuity. The best way to get great results is to always be prepared for them to have a certain consistency in your life. So I saw Dylan White. Forget the drug test problem. I saw Dylan White against Oscar Rivas looking sluggish, looking overweight, not looking fast, not looking crisp. Now for this fight, we were to believe that Dylan White was dedicated, right? This time was supposed to be different. Dylan White loses a bunch of weight, right? Oh, he's in shape now. That's not the way being in shape works. You show me the guy who gets out of shape between fights, who's close to a heavyweight title shot, but yet can't show up in shape for fights like his fight against Oscar Rivas. Right? Doesn't have consistency like Prevetkin has consistency. Have you ever seen Alexander Prevetkin out of shape? Understand it matters. Dylan White may have gone into this fight thinking I'm faster than ever. I'm in better shape than ever. He was in the ring against a lifelong athlete. Vetkin's always been one of the best athletes in the heavyweight division. Go back through my videos here. On Povetkin, going back years, you'll see me calling him one of the best athletes in the heavyweight division. Dylan White's recent, that's the word, recent weight loss wasn't going to offset Povetkin's lifelong dedication to fitness. He was faster than Dylan White. Now Dylan White is more surgical. Right? Dylan White is there trying to deconstruct you. Trying to figure out what you're going to do next. But here he's dealing with an ambush fighter who's going to tilt the sample size. Understand, there's a certain variance in what Prevetkin is doing by design. Right? When he jumps in, I mean, watch the two guys. Before every exchange, both of them are faking, are faking, are faking. The difference between them is Dylan White's trying to land a jab. Right? Dylan White knows he doesn't have the athleticism to just jump in the pocket, go low. You know, throw a lazy left hand, then go low. Throw an uppercut. He doesn't have that level of athleticism. He's also trying to read the other guy. Povetkin's not trying to read him apart from picking an entry point because Povetkin 
has predetermined scenarios he's trying to set up. Right? He jumps in like this. Dylan White seen this right hand several times earlier in the fight. Right? Think about it. We were reaching the midway point of the fight, and Povetkin had already thrown huge punches. He wasn't warming up. He starts the fight on second base. So when Povetkin jumps in like this and then throws a lazy left hand, Dylan White only has a millisecond to figure stuff out. Who's going to think that Povetkin's then going to drop off the screen instead of throwing this right, drop off the screen and come back up with an uppercut? Right, get so low he's down around Dylan White's waist. Then have the coordination to come up, land flush, that left uppercut. Dylan White just can't drive that fast. We're in a big, clunky, heavyweight era. Right, Dylan White 6'4". Where you have guys with skills. If you agree to a certain set of rules. Understand, revisit the Joshua Povetkin fight. And understand, both of those guys were Olympic gold medalists. The only other guy Povetkin lost to was an earlier Olympic gold medalist, Vladimir Klitschko. Right? Povetkin himself is a former champion. Now, Dylan White gets dropped at the end of the Joseph Parker fight. Dylan White gets hurt, and he's out of shape in the Oscar Rivas fight. And you mean to tell me that casinos were giving you better than two and a half to one on Alexander Povetkin? Folks, you knew the line was off. You knew at a minimum Povetkin had the faster feet. Now, I'll agree. Povetkin looked bad in his fight against Michael Hunter. That's a great fight, by the way. That's a great fight. But understand, Michael Hunter can match Povetkin's athleticism. Michael Hunter has great legs has great coordination. He's an athlete on par with Povetkin. He's one of the more elusive guys in the ring. Not only that, look up Michael Hunter's background. He's fought Usyk, the other boogeyman in the heavyweight division. Right? I'll say Usyk's going to haunt the bigs, just like Povetkin's going to haunt the bigs. I've said this before, if Michael Hunter gets an opportunity against Tyson Fury or Anthony Joshua, that's a much more competitive fight than any of us want to admit because of the coordination, because of the ability to fight fast, because of the spacing. Now think about this fight again. Right? Where's Dylan White when he gets hit with the uppercut? Folks, he's on his heels. He's not that far from the ropes. He's lucky when he hits the canvas, his head doesn't hit the ropes. Right? You've had deaths in boxing on fighters getting whiplash with their heads hitting the ropes. Understand the reason why Dylan White has his back up by the ropes for stretches of this fight, including the end of the prior round when he knocks down Povetkin. Right? The second knockdown of the prior round is because Povetkin is so much faster than Dylan White. Fights faster. Traditionalists will focus on things like hand speed, not body speed. Right? It's because Povetkin is faking, 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 and Dylan White knows that when Povetkin enters the pocket, 
he's going to be throwing heavy shots. He's not trying to just win rounds. Povetkin is trying to hurt you. That's the design. And because all he needs is for you to make a split second guess that he's coming back with the right hand after he taps you with the left when, he's, when his real game is to go low and hit you with an uppercut. One that he's coiled for. Right? Has Dylan White backing up in a fight? One of the best jabbers in the heavyweight division. Right? Is backing up. So that knockdown in the prior round, it's Dylan White who's up against the ropes. This knockout in the next round, it's Povetkin on Dylan White's side of the ring. Right? Let me uh, say a few other things, too. You see Povetkin's age. This version of Povetkin would lose to the Povetkin from five years ago. He's getting hit with too many shots. Right? You notice that Dylan White is able to even land his jab on Pervetkin's chin in the fight. So don't get me wrong. The age is showing on Pervetkin. But Pervetkin is the more aggressive fighter here. Povetkin is the guy who can fight faster. Dylan White's looking for a pattern. A pattern. Povetkin keeps changing the pattern. Because Povetkin knows when he comes in, I believe he knew he was going to throw that left uppercut before he jumped in the pocket. I believe Povetkin knows that about much of what he's doing. So, the Anthony Joshua fight, I know the judges scored it differently. There's a political element to boxing. I've noticed that both Joshua and Deontay Wilder have gotten favorable scoring early in rounds. It takes a few rounds for the judges to actually see the fight that's going on. Right? Boxing is an expectation game. It takes a few rounds for the expectations to change. What I want people to do is to revisit the early part of the Anthony Joshua Prevetkin fight. Understand, that's by far Prevetkin's worst loss. He gets knocked down multiple times by Vladimir Klitschko, but he gets up just like he did in, in the Dylan White fight where he's knocked down multiple times. And he finishes that fight. In the Joshua fight, he's unable to finish. Right? He's badly hurt. He can't even throw the poker face on to look like he's dazed. No, he's badly hurt. That's his worst loss. Revisit that fight. Because Joshua is just like Dylan White. He's big and clunky. In fact, he's even bigger and clunkier. Because he's trying to hide behind a jab and be a counter puncher if you crash the pocket. Right? Because neither Dylan White nor Anthony Joshua are hunters. Right? They don't enter the ring thinking, hey, I'm going to collapse the pocket and I'm going to throw the heavy punches. I want this guy to feel my power. I want to knock this guy out early. Because neither of them is that guy. It opens the door for a Povetkin, an ambush fighter, to be outside, to then jump in with power shots, and then to get back outside. Povetkin's beating Anthony Joshua, folks. That's not a fight Joshua wants again. If I'm Joshua, I wouldn't have that fight again. Understand, Joshua has more than one belt as it is. Even if Povetkin's mandatory for one belt, 
Joshua can do a Riddick bow, throw that belt in the garbage and say, hey, I'm going to focus on these other guys. Right? But understand, when you have so many guys at heavyweight, Wilder, Joshua, Fury, who are relying on size, who have problems with smaller, more agile fighters, isn't that why Fury is on the canvas against Steve Cunningham? Right? Aren't it the smaller guys who give Fury who moves well, who has the foot speed, problems? Well, you saw a 6'4 guy have a problem with a 40-year-old 6'2 guy who was a greater than 2.5 to 1 underdog. Dylan White couldn't match not only Povetkin's foot speed, but Povetkin's agility. Right? Revisit that KO. How low is Povetkin before he uncorks that left uppercut? Right? Dylan White, a guy who's surgical, who wants to deconstruct you as he sees you. Against a guy who can get low, was unprepared to deal with him coming from underneath. Right? Punch lands cleanly. Right? A guy like Dylan White, a counterpuncher, who wants to figure out what you're doing, doesn't know what to do with an ambush fighter who's only in the pocket for a few punches and then backs out of the pocket. Povetkin's active. He keeps you working. He's too quick twitch for some of today's big clunky heavyweights. So, I believe Dylan White's making a mistake wanting to get a quick rematch on him. Career-wise, he has to. He's 32. Your prime doesn't last forever, and he's not a great athlete. He's 32. He's close to a shot. Had he won this fight, he would have been guaranteed a shot at the heavyweight title. So I know. He's thinking, man, I knocked this guy down twice. Boxing has an echo chamber. I'm sure his promoter, Eddie Hearn, I'm sure... The people in his corner are telling him, man, you were so close to winning. <laughs> man, you had this guy almost out of there the earlier round. He got lucky. This was a lucky punch. Right? Understand, in a few months' time, Dylan White is still not going to be able to match. Alexander Povetkin's athleticism. As I like to say here on this site, how do you beat an ambush fighter? You follow him after the ambush. Dylan White doesn't have the physical gifts to follow Povetkin after the ambush. Understand, Derek Chisora, who Dylan White beat twice, isn't an ambush fighter. He's the guy who shows up at your door and then sits down to have dinner with you. When he enters the pocket, he stays in the pocket. This is different. Ambush fighters are episodic. And it's always a storm. In other words, here's Prevetkin always trying to throw a big right hand on me. Chris Povetkin, oh, he's getting low. He's trying to throw an uppercut on me. Then, of course, you look and the guy's back outside. Right? He's trying to pick entry points. Now, if you have the legs to say, oh, here's Povetkin. I'm going to follow him after this home invasion. So he jumps in your home. He causes havoc. Then he runs out the home. You run out onto the front lawn with him. 
Suddenly an ambush fighter has to deal with you doing the ambush. Ambush fighters fall apart on their back feet. Right? Their rhythm of the fight is different than, let's say, a jabber and mover. In a few months' time, Dylan White's not going to have that level of foot speed, that athleticism. Quite frankly, he's never going to have it, folks. He's in his 30s now. His whole game has been to outthink, out jab, go to the body on opponents. That's why he calls himself the body snatcher. Understand, because he's fighting an ambush fighter in this fight, the guy with the more effective body shots was Provetkin. Because again, Provetkin isn't there to read you and to write your biography. He's just coming in with scenarios. So he comes in, it's all pre-programmed. Right left hand up top, right hand to the body. I'm back out. That's anathema to Dylan White who wants to figure out your punch pattern, who then realizes, hey, when I do this and he does that, he's open to the body here. An ambush fighter doesn't stick around for you to do that level of analysis. So if you don't have the legs to follow an ambush fighter after the ambush, then in my eyes, you're left with just trying to parry the ambush and counter the ambusher while he's in the pocket. If that's your only effective strategy, if you can't hunt the guy down, you're going to have problems, especially against an athlete like this who in more than one fight, the Klitschko fight in this fight, has gotten off the canvas multiple times to continue the fight. Let me say this too. Vladimir Klitschko. You'll notice it on film. When Pervetkin did an ambush, Vladimir Klitschko, who was a master clincher, would clinch him. Right? Would push him under his arm. Would grab him. So Pervetkin now has figured out what Mike Tyson figured out when Tyson was at his best. Rather than come in and allow the other guy to clinch you. Right? You come in, but you stay just far enough away where the other guy can't clinch you, can't slow you down that way. Right? With experience comes insight. So Dylan White in this fight, when Prevetkin jumps in the pocket, isn't even able to clinch him. So the optical illusion on this fight was that Dylan White was dominating the fight. Right? Dylan White never figures out how to deal with Prevetkin's ambushes. He does knock Prevetkin down twice. That second knockdown is a hard knockdown. No question about it. But understand, that's not going to deter Prevetkin. Right? Prevetkin's going to continue to throw the heaviest of punches. Folks, he's all in on the uppercut that ends the fight. Right? Just look at his legs. He gets low. <laughs> <coughs> when he comes up, <coughs> it's with as much leverage as possible. Right? Pavetkin knows he only has to be right once. In my opinion, Dylan White just can't fight that fast. Let me close by shining a light on a different fight. Yoan Hernandez came back against what looked to be a fading kingpin, Kevin Johnson. But Johnson's a savvy vet, real savvy. So if you look at the end of that fight, Johnson has Hernandez hurt. So Johnson is openly pursuing him. So then Hernandez who was a great fighter, who only had one loss going into this fight, but was coming back. Hernandez tries to grab, tries to clinch Kevin Johnson. 
So Kevin Johnson at that moment puts his hands up. <laughs> Literally, that move doesn't allow the clinch. He has the guy hurt. He wants the action to continue. So he puts both hands up and pushes Hernandez back. So Hernandez tries again to clinch Kevin Johnson. Johnson again puts a hand up on Hernandez's collarbone and pushes him back. It's because Hernandez can't clinch Johnson that Johnson is able to end the fight a few punches later. Right? Unless Dylan White figures out how to clinch Prevetkin to stop his ambushes or how to hide his upper body, and I don't think he can, Right, Dylan White just doesn't fight that way. He's not Sergio Martinez. Then he's always going to have trouble with Alexander Povetkin. Let's see what the line is on the second fight. Let's see if this narrative continues of, oh, Dylan White was dominating the fight. This was a lucky one-punch knockout. It's about as lucky as a one-punch knockout could be where a fighter comes in like this, hits you with a soft left, knowing he's not going to throw the right hand, assuming that you're going to try to block the right hand, knowing that he's going to get low, then come back up with a hard left uppercut deep in the pocket with the ropes not too far behind Dylan White. Folks, this was a setup. It was done masterfully. If you were a gambler, this fight delivered. You got better than two and a half to one odds. I got a plus 280 on the fight, as I said in the pre-fight video. I know the line was well over plus 300 by the time these guys entered the ring. In the comment section of this video, tell us what odds you got. Let us know the only downside of the fight was that Povetkin was too effective and the hedge of the over did not hold because Dylan White was not able to make it to the second half of the fight. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. I hope you leave your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.